Tuesday afternoon, I'm on JP's camera. Yeah, boy. Going out the harbour, JP's all set up because why JP? Why are you setting up so late? Because uh, I was a good Samaritan and a bloke had broke down in a Ford Transit and I had to tow him around the building site and it didn't start. Just remember, the good guys finish last. Yeah. <laughs> I should have just said, nah, mate, I know it's your 33rd birthday. I'm going diving, sorry. 33 is not a special birthday. No, it's not. <laughs> it, it, it's not a birthday you want to break down on. Well, you don't really want to break down on any birthday to be fair. <laughs> well, it's a brand new transit. Oh, no. It's Tuesday night. And we're done. Again. Yes, we are. What are we doing? Down towards Gabriel. Gabriel? Yeah. We're going for a scenic dive down Gabriel, starting at the top in 10 metres of water and finishing at the bottom in 40 plus. And you're going to have a nice scenic dive, don't have to pick up any scallops, just go and have a nice dive and film me a nice big crayfish. Oh. I haven't got my camera, so I'm oh. about to see all sorts of Mermaids, now. dolphins, yeah. sharks. Sharks eating mermaids. Whilst and being attacked by a dolphin. Yeah. Killer whales. Killer whales. Everything you see without cameras, you know? Yeah. Always happens. First impressions of the visibility, it looks absolutely stunning. And then it quickly deteriorated with a snot again. just out in the middle of nowhere the visibility went extremely bad we're not sure why Finally found what we came to see. This one isn't actually massive, it's um, probably six inches, maybe seven inches long. It's got loads of um, silt or dust over, over its antennae and its, its carapace. This one's much cleaner than that one, not very far apart. Chatting to old divers, they used to, to say that um, there used to be a bull crayfish and then loads of hens around it in almost like a circle. So you never take the bull, you always just take the hens, which is probably why they ended up getting fished out in the end, taking all the breeding stock. It wasn't just the divers which were taking these crays, they were getting targeted by the netters and I read a report recently that in uh, Cornwall the people that have been netting for these crayfish have actually diminished the stock by 85% again so sadly it's looking like they're going to be hard to find. So it might not look it but we're actually swimming into the tide here um, and it's actually making me a little bit tired, you can see see it on Phil's uh, bag here, you can see the ropes coming back, almost horizontal. So we, what the reason we're swimming into the tide is we're trying to head to the drop off. Um, there's a big wall that drops down into the deep, which we're just trying to find now. So we're swimming north northeasterly. There's some small scallops around here. I mean, very small scallops.
amazing the difference the actual torch makes because uh, the light, the red light is what gets reduced first so the water is actually absorbing the sunlight and the spectrum so it starts off with red and then orange so the red is the first colour you lose then orange and so on and so forth that's why everything looks green or blue or mauve or purple So I keep taking looks to the right to look on the uh, rock face to see if I can see any more crayfish. There's loads of soft sponges and corals. And there's some weird, um, it looks like staghorn coral. So there's some chunks of ear. But doing research, I don't think it is staghorn coral because you only get that in the uh, tropical waters. So I'm not quite sure what that is. So if you know what it is, can you put it in the comments please? Because I've done a Google search and I can't find it. Here's a lobster hole. So it's two lobsters here. This one on the right looks a little tiny skinny baby one. And the one on the left looks like it's been in a fight or two because it's only got one claw. Some of the colours around here are absolutely stunning when you got the lights on. So we're actually on the on the face of the uh, cliff, on the wall, as I would say in diving terms, and it's just full of coral. So there's nutrients rising up from the bottom, and we're actually swimming into a valley now um, to have a little look. Phil's found another little crayfish here, so we're going to have a little look at him. Just turn the lights off as well, so I'll probably have to turn the lights back on. So I looked to my left there because there was a cheeky little uh, um, rainbow wrasse that come around uh, and went for me. He, I don't think I think he was swimming around the reef. He didn't realise I was there, and then sort of panicked and quick went the other way. There he is. Look, just hiding. large sea urchin it's probably like the size of my head so this is a load of um, crab pots that have been lost so obviously someone's paid their pots down here uh, half of them are in deep water half of them are in shallow water but by the look of the growth on them ropes they haven't been pulled in a long time so they're probably probably lost Certainly looks like the ropes are wrapped around the reef everywhere. So they're not getting them back. Not without a diver anyway. I've seen 
enough I'm going up I want to save at least 120 bar for my second dive and plus I don't want to go into deco I think I was at zero now big old grand total of three scallops I think Phil's got in his bag four <laughs> He's sent his up on the lift bag. Huh? Matt sent his up on the lift bag. With a cannonball. With a cannonball. Oh, oh good cannonball. All along. You were a lucky greyhound when you were at the bottom. I was trying to catch up with you, God. <laughs> that was lovely. This is oh, I thought you might like that. Oh, right. <laughs> so Matt's had to send his up with the lift bag. I don't know why, he's only got any in here. Oh, that's why he sent it up in the lift bag. Then. Oh. Matt's back. Matt's back. Did you clean the prop? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes you sick, eh? Yeah. So, where were we? We were saying, what's this, Matt? Cocoon. Oh, can I guess what it is? World, World War One, World War Two, Boer War. It's cannibal, I reckon. It's cannibal. Yeah, I reckon. Oh. That feels very cannibal-like. Forty-seven meters. Forty-seven meter cannibal. Forty-seven meters. Well, hope it's a cannibal. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It's sort of yeah. a replica of that, yeah, yeah. flat out here, and then a replica of the cliffs again. Yeah. Look, are we twenty meters down to forty-seven meters? Yeah. In the blink of an eye. Right at 47 meters. Those are not eagles, aren't they? Oh, yeah, we're in bad. 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 The funny thing is, Bill, look mate, there's no pots, no boffs around here, so... The boff is on the bottom? Yeah. So that's obviously been pulled down in the tide yeah. and gone so deep, it's crushed the buff. Yeah. No buoyancy left and it's sunk. I thought it was a um, scoop tank, because all I saw was a round test with a hole in it. Yeah. Oh well, someone's lost their truce of pots. Yeah. It's going to be close, a bit of comparison. Paul's, Paul's box, Matt's box. I reckon your cannibal will top that box off that for that. Pass me a size or a bees. You don't keep the cannibals anyway, do you mate? You chuck them straight back in the arbor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That'd be I want to do that dive again. Yeah. I haven't done that for a long time. Last time I done that dive, I seen a nice cannon. Oh not a cannon, a nice anchor. Up against the reef. Yeah, really old one. 74. AC2. And a cannonball. That's a big old hammer there. Oh, here we go. Hammer time. Lump hammer. That's actually Keeney's uh, toolbox, that. Oh, look, hang on. The lump hammer's down that end now, I think. Is the lump hammer down that end? Where's your skeleton key, Richard? What? Where's your skeleton key? The, the lump hammer? Uh, should be up in the... Uh, should, should be up the top curtain. somewhere. Cracking cannonballs. 
Det står ned her. Se her. Vi får den. Det må vi stoppe med sådan noget. Still in gear. Pushing around. Oh, oh, it's a cannon ball. Well, yeah, we saw it do that. Yeah. Don't wreck the supplies. Oh. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's heavy little bugger. She's smelly as well. I think we like bills. Yeah, it's a cast hole. There's no fuse. So it's a solid round shot. Bugger. Oh, she's fizzing, look. She's fizzing, yeah, she's got a hole in it. Cast hole. Because it's been under pressure at 47 metres for all this time, it's equalised with the water pressure, and now we've brought it back to the surface. It's oh, doing a bit of deco oh, equivalent. She's bobbling. Um, Doing a bit of deco now on the service. <laughs> hey? Yeah, man, look at that. They like to grow their hair long down this end. Look at that. Oh, wait, yeah, mate, have it. Cheers, cheers. Oh, Second side. Second side. Oh, no, I, like, I love the pile. Paul, hang on. You said you, you're not bothered. Whose box, who's are these going in? So One, two, three. That's my contribution. Have I covered the fuel bill? Probably not. No. I'd probably say not. <laughs> That's one pound fifty. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> That's a one pathetic, eh? <laughs> it cost me three pound fifty to fill my tank up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just warming her up on the mooring. JP, you getting ready to dive? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at my tash. Look. Oh, it is. It's horrendous. Oh, it's smelling okay, weird. you should be close to the reef. I got you. That is going out of the way. Hello, Roy. It looks dusty here. Yeah. I can see him just there. So our plan for this dive is actually get ourselves some uh, flatfish. And this is an area where we know there's Dover soles. So we're going to look for some Dover soles. Oh, there it is. There it is. Is my first target. Don't you die, don't you die! As you can tell, that spider crab almost completely destroyed my uh, bit of footage there because he was going to run over the top of that Dover Soul. Now I just need the silk to drop out of the water, which this isn't going to do because there's literally no tide here. his eyes follow me around all the time. He thinks he's invisible to me, but he's obviously not.
That's a nice nice colour of the shoulder, eh? So the most humane way of uh, catching these things is with a metal spike and just behind their head in the centre of their body is the what we call the kill zone. So it, it makes them, um, doesn't put them in much pain to be honest. They flap around for a tiny bit but then they, they die fairly quickly so it's, it's as painless as we can do it. Oh, no. Thought I'd seen it over soul then, but it wasn't. Spit seaweed. Okay. Still seeing large numbers of these large male spider crabs in, which is nice. That one back there wasn't actually a male, it was a female. This is what the Davis holes are feeding on, these very small bait fish. And the bait fish are loving it around here because there's little bits of seaweed they can hide up between. It's quite frustrating because I've seen loads of Dover soles and I filmed quite a few, but I realised when coming up from the dive, I think I didn't have it on record, which is a common thing when you get a bit excited. There's loads of little bits, loads of stuff scurrying around. You can see on the seabed here, there's loads of tracks where whelks have gone through, and hermit crabs, and little shore crabs. Uh, there's shrimps and stuff as well. Not too sure where JP and, and uh, Phil are going, but yeah. Phil looks like he's going in towards Havlet on a shore dive. Yeah. Holy always does oh, alright. Nice it's, it's JP as well. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah, Holy does well, isn't Need to be a bit closer up towards the shore, I reckon. Lovely day, though. A little touch of wind from the east. Yeah, not bad at all. Showing the wind as well. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, not sweating on the wind. <laughs> So you notice how the, uh, there's a female um, spider crab, now mm -hmm. they've mated, they seem to be a bit worse for wear now, a bit floppy. So I don't know if they're about to die, I don't know, I'm not sure. Ha 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 ha! I found you! There's markings everywhere of fish around here. <laughs> that was another Dover sole, but he was a bit small, that one, so I think Phil let him go. <laughs> There's another one for Phil, another little one. So we just slide them on and slide them into the bag. They won't be kicking around for too long. They'd be dead the time they get to the surface. He's still doing his bit for the environment, so he's found a metal can, he's chucked that in his bag, and take that back to the surface. Chuck it in a bin when we get to shore.
So the, when you dive with a bag like this and you ain't got no catches, what you do is you choke the bag so you make a, a loop around the neck, push the fish in. So you feel we do it here, look. Me and Phil getting bored to have a little bit of fun. trying to film a jellyfish here and it's actually stung me on the lip. So now it's, it's got a little fish with it. I'm not sure if the fish is its prey or the fish is actually staying near it for protection. <laughs> is it? No. I cleaned right across the, uh, the keel and stuff. I'm trying to get the Sorry? beard off. I cleaned right down the keel. No, it's just the prop we really oh, clean. The boat have Oh, he's got his line. Yeah. Oh, there's one slack. Huh? Okay, it could be slack. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> you buffed that way, Phil. <laughs> Just check if we've got the air. Hey! Well, flat fish. Lovely. Couple of little dovers here. Pick, pick them up, Bill, so we can have a little look. Mm. Oh, such a shame, though. No. Nice. Deep dive. The sun only shines on the righteous. Yeah. Allegedly. And that's that's the righteous there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a fishing charter over from the UK. What do you reckon? Oh, the boat's that an interceptor? Interceptor. Looks like an interceptor. Yes. From Portland. Evolution. It's not corrected. It's an evolution. Back door in it. And we're back after another Tuesday night dip. Is that Paul's tank emptying?
Taking the feet of red legs. Right. Taking the feet of red legs. Push the boat out for you, mate, yeah? Oh, hang on, hang on, I've done that wrong. Oh, oh, oh. Nah. Standing there to keep the fresh. Oh, what happened? Oh, hit me on the foot. What was it? <laughs> what did? <laughs> took, it took your ankle out. <laughs> over there and oh, <laughs> couldn't do that again. <laughs> So he's got a big day's diving tomorrow. We dive Guernsey. He dives just as much as us, that bloke. Well, thanks everyone for coming along. That's our uh, Tuesday night dip. I have to wait till Saturday now, and we've got a special one booked for Saturday. Fingers crossed all the weather pans out, and we're going to do a deep one. We're going to do the bison at 60 metre. So thanks for coming along. We've done a little bit of a deep one there and then uh, looking for some crayfish, uh, found a few. And then we also went and done a, uh, me and Field on a, a flatty bash, um, kind of hoping the camera was recording because it was on and off and on and off. And after a while, there was so many flatties there. I don't know which one I recorded. We, we took two though, two were just about big enough. Phil's had one for tea, I'm gonna have one for tea. And my wife's gonna have one for tea. Possibly the kids will have some as well, but all right. Thanks for coming along with us again and keep your eyes peeled out for uh, more videos on it on the way. I've probably got about four now that I need to edit and get up onto the um, onto the YouTube uh, page. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a catch up to do. I mean, I still haven't even done my World War II bomb, the one I found after Phil, which we got detonated. So hopefully I can get that one up soon as well. Okay, thanks for coming along and I'll catch you on the next tide.